Senate Minority Leader leads to fight another day as he withdraws his bill for an establishment of a commission for the army. Also, House Speaker Femi Bajabiamila sets up a committee to find lasting solution to current threats to national security. There is still swelling controversy over the Deputy Speaker's statement against Nigerians in the diaspora. Later on the program, Honorable Mark Billa joins me to talk about the rejection he faced when he brought a petition for a group of Nigerians in the diaspora. This is the Hallow Chambers. I am Sijesu Adiri. A rowdy session erupted on the floor of the Nigerian Senate when Minority Leader Ainaya Abaribe's bill seeking for the establishment of the Armed Forces Commission 2021 came up for second reading. Senator Abaribe, representing Abia South Senatorial District, says the bill seeks to, among other things, address lopsided appointments of heads of security agencies by the president. He told his colleagues that the function and powers of the commission shall be to ensure that the composition or appointment of service chiefs of the armed forces reflects the federal character of Nigeria in the manner prescribed in section 217 subsection 3 of the 1999 constitution. The bill sharply divided opinions among senators as some queued behind the motion and others were strongly opposed to it. <laughs> this turned into chaos. President of the Senate attempted to save the day by calling for a voice vote and ruled in favor of the nays. But Ainaya Baribe again challenged the credibility of the voice vote and demanded a physical voting by lawmakers invoking Section 73 of the Senate's standing rule. The commotion continued and forced the Senate to withdraw to an executive session where the matter was resolved and some concessions were made. Mr. President, in order to preserve the dignity of this hallowed chambers, I wish to withdraw my Order 73. Secondly, and for us to be able to do further consultations on the bill that I have proposed, I wish also to step down the consideration of this bill until a more appropriate time. I so submit, Mr. President. In the House of Representatives, lawmakers are still concerned about the frightening rise of insecurity across the country. Now the Speaker of the House of Representatives has announced the composition of an ad hoc committee saddled with the responsibility of coming up with workable solutions to end insecurity. Special committee um, that will com uh, comprise of all the principal officers, the leadership, and um, about 30 other members. Uh, to sit down and um, in the next hopefully two, three weeks come up with a solid proposal on a way forward, knock heads together, a way forward to stem the security problems in Nigeria. Last week's plenary had barely ended when a video went viral showing a verbal exchange between the Deputy okay, yes, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Ahmed Idris Wasi, and Mark Bila, representing Gwer West, Gwer East of Benue State, about the rights of Nigerians in the diaspora to complain about issues in the country. The Benue lawmaker submitted a petition filed by an ethnic pressure group in the United States of America calling the attention of the government to the plight of the T people sacked from their ancestral land. The deputy speaker's response created a huge buzz on social media. <music> Joining me on the program is the man who presented this petition on the floor of the House, Honorable Mark Villa. You're welcome to the Hallow Chamber, sir. It's good to have you on the program. Thank you very much. The pleasure is all mine. So let's delve straight into the matters now. Did you expect this kind of reaction from the deputy speaker when you presented a petition on behalf of Mota? 
you can clearly see from the video that it was unexpected. I was quite flustered because typically a petition stands laid before the house. So unfortunately for me, unfortunately for the deputy speaker, I did not have a copy of our standing rules to make that point very clear to him because I didn't expect that there will be any issue with the submission of a petition, which we all know stands referred to the relevant committee, which is a committee on public petitions. Did you think the deputy speaker's statement might have been taken out of context? Um, no, you see, the videos do not lie. A video does not lie. I read the statement from the speaker, which I personally do not think he previewed before he allowed it to be sent out. Otherwise, for somebody of this legislative experience, he should have cautioned whoever wrote this, this speech or the statement. Because in that statement, they implied that the video was doctored or whatever was sent to the media was doctored. Now, that is, has very far-reaching implications. Does that mean that uh, videos from the house are doctored before they are sent to the public? That was, in my opinion, you know, quite condescending to the institution. So obviously, when I say when I say if he was taken out of context, probably what he meant to say was a different thing, but he, it was interpreted in another way. Do you think this is the situation here? No, I totally understood you, and I was coming to that point. Now that is not the situation. Now why do I say that? Which, without any personal grounds with the deputy speaker, in his statement he categorically said, um, "I don't want to make a blanket statement." against those in diaspora and went ahead to say that if they're in America, he doubts whether they know what is going on in America, in Nigeria. So that is not being taken out of context. It clearly implied that in his own perception, he felt that the TIV people in America who sent that petition had no knowledge or could not have knowledge of what transpired in Nigeria. And this obviously is an affront against our compatriots in diaspora who are Nigerian citizens and who obviously contribute more to our GDP sometimes than oil itself and have kith and kin and family members in Nigeria who they keep tabs with and are obviously in touch with what is going on in the country. Okay, tell us again um, what exactly is contained in this petition. How serious are the issues that were raised? No, the, the issues are quite grave and concerning. The petition was from the Mutual Union of the TIV in America, abbreviated as MUTA, and it was seeking the expeditious return of the TIV people to their ancestral lands in Benue, Nasara, Taraba, and other states who have been displaced from incessant headsman attacks and other communal clashes against the Tif people by indigenous, particularly in Taraba state, who felt they were more indigenous than the Tif people. It is no longer news that Tif people and other people in Benue and other states are languishing in IDP camps. The situation in Tivland is very grave because of the numbers of people there who have been unable to continue with their means of livelihood. We're an agrarian community. They have been unable to go back to their farmlands. Their children are not being educated and they're not being able to fend for themselves. We're having children that are emaciated now from their plight diseases are rife in those camps. And it is quite scary and concerning that since May 2018, when the vice president made a statement that 10 billion Naira had been made available for resettlement of people in Benue and other states who are victims of herdsmen, not a single cobble has been released in that regard. So I want to use this medium to call on the president, Muhammad Buhari, to be aware that that pronouncement by his vice president has not been honored. 
and the chief people who ha are daily being subjected to these inhuman circumstances are no longer feeling that they are considered as citizens of this country. It is worrisome that NEMA daily and monthly makes interventions in Borno State as a result of Boko Haram attacks, but are they more citizens of this country than the IDPs in Tivla and in Benue State? These are things that are of concern to some of us. There was a loud silence on the floor of the House among your colleagues when your, pre your petition was rejected. Do you feel let down because no one spoke in your defense? No, I do not. Um, let me give the benefit of the doubt to my colleagues, some of who, like some of us, are Ivy League educated. They're champions of industry in their own right. The circumstances, the issues transpired very quickly on the floor while members were still coming in. So it's just unfortunate that uh, probably even the chief whip himself, who was saying I should be guided, didn't avail himself of the details of the circumstances to instead have guided the deputy speaker accordingly in that regard. So I would say that, uh, let me give my colleagues the benefit of the doubt, although I must point out that uh, there's still certain circumstances that I believe we should address as a house when others are perceived like some of us as being in the opposition and opposed the emergence of this leadership. So sometimes those sentiments play themselves on uh, play themselves out on the floor. But in this particular instance, I don't want to think that that was the case. Has the deputy speaker reached out to you or the group that filed this petition to apologize or at least put things in proper perspective? Um, no, he has not. He has not reached out to me, his colleague. He has not reached out to the uh, officials of Muta, who I'm in touch with daily. He has not reached out to the TV Nation. Now, it is important, and I'm happy you asked this question, because um, in his press statement, unfortunately, he appeared to be doubling down on what occurred, making inferences to uh, the videos have been being doctored and slanted, and making inferences about him trying to correct me, you know, and now that is where now I take exception because he is my colleague. He's not my superior or boss. He's just first amongst equals. We elected them to lead, not to be domineering upon us or to prevent me from carrying out my statutory responsibility, which he tried to do. And that is where I now take exception with because I am quite aware of what the rules say with regards to submission of petitions, so I didn't need to be corrected. I had not erred in any way. Unfortunately, it is the deputy speaker who erred by starting to take exception to the submission of a petition, which a presiding officer by our rules does not even have the power to do. So what are you hearing from the group, Muta? What is the feelers you're getting about the reaction of the statement to the, of the deputy speaker? Well, this issue has gone way beyond Muta. It's now a diaspora issue. I'm sure you have seen the numerous petitions that have been sent to the House, to the President, even to the UN, over the comments of the Deputy Speaker. And I sincerely believe that at this juncture, he should, and I am personally requesting for that issue an unequivocal apology to me the constituents I represent, the Tiv Nation and Nigerians in diaspora for those comments which imply that Nigerians in diaspora are not Nigerian citizens and cannot be heard in their own parliament, in their own country. And it's important to point out and correct two things he said. He talked about whether they were dual citizens. Our constitution has nothing against being a dual citizen. They are only provisos about being able to participate in elective office. So even as a dual citizen, you still maintain your citizenship as a Nigerian, that is one. And secondly, he talked about whether that administration I was presenting a petition on behalf of was registered. Now, even though that doesn't matter, it's important to put it on record that they are duly registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission of Nigeria under their umbrella body of Nzo Tiv. But our constitution very clearly in section 40 gives us the fundamental human right of freedom of association. So whether or not we're registered with CAC, 
is beside the fact. So, but it's just important to put these things on record because he didn't even provide me with the opportunity like I requested for it to be submitted for the committee to look at those concerns he had. If you look at the video, I asked him, why don't you just let it get to the committee because that is the process. It is usually referred to the committee and the committee checks whether that petition meets the requirements of our rules. So will you say security agencies have not done enough to secure the lives and property of the people in the Teve Nation? No, in that respect, I will be the first to commend this administration for the military initiative called Operation Wellstroke that has very sincerely brought a semblance of normalcy in predominantly most areas that are restive and affected. They still need to do a lot more because they are not being located in close proximity to the restive areas. So they don't respond on time in certain instances, but I want to commend them for their service to the nation. So they have done a good job in that regard. The concern for us is the intervention that is required with regards to resettlement, with regards to fending, for the people with regards to providing security after they return to their homelands. And that is the area where we can't say if security operatives are doing well so far because they have not been returned to their ancestral lands at this point. So as lawmakers, where do you draw the line between partisanship and issues of national interest? Because you, you feel your petition was rejected based on a partisan line. Where do you draw the line? Um, well, I want to give the Deputy Speaker the benefit of a doubt, but from his response on the floor, it appeared that his response seemed to have been premeditated by some angst. I don't know if it's against the mention of the word thief or those in diaspora in America. I don't know what triggered his angst at the submission of the petition, but such reactions, obviously, are not expected from somebody at that level in the legislature, which is why you can see that opinions are rife about whether this was ethnically motivated or politically motivated. But for whatever reason, it was unnecessary and uncalled for and has put even the institution in bad light, which is why I will be resubmitting that petition again when I return to the country next week. Uh -huh. It's a matter of privilege. My privilege, like I mentioned earlier, has been breached. The institution itself should uphold its rules and its values and virtues to show Nigerians all over the world that they hold them in high esteem and consider them to be citizens of the country, no matter their, citizen, their dual citizenship and their present location where they're domiciled. That's all on our program this week. Do not forget to follow TVC News on all social media platforms. Also follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Tijesu Adeoye TVC. We'll leave you with a parting shot of this week's activities on the floor of the National Assembly. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Give women equal opportunities to allow women achieve their full potentials. There is a Almighty God, creator and ruler of heaven and earth, we beseech thee to inspire and guide all our counsels and actions so that we may always walk in the path of justice, love, and charity to one another. There is no other, eh?
I hear, I hear somebody shouting point of order. Who might that person be? Who might that person be? <laughs> 